a very good morning to all hi this is dr sandeep prayasarkar assistant professor from holy cross college agartala so let me start so uh, our today's topic of discussion is the mutagens what are mutagens what are their effects how they induces the mutation first of all what are mutagens so mutagens are agents those increases the frequency of mutation this increases the frequency of induced mutations they induces the mutation to occur so a variety of agents that increases the frequency of mutation are the mutagens now what are the different types in broad sense mutations can be divided into two types one are physical and the others are chemical mutagens what about chemical mutagens these are some chemical substances like base analogs nitrous acids or some agents those can intercalate or those can enter in between the dna, DNA strand these are the chemical mutagens what about the physical mutagens physical mutagens are physical agents two types one are the ionizing radiations another one are non ionizing radiation now what is the ionizing radiation so this is a type of the ionizing radiation is a type of energy which is released by the atoms that travel in the form of electromagnetic waves or the particles so ionizing radiations is or are a type of energy which is released by the atoms that travels in the form of electromagnetic waves or the particles two forms either electromagnetic waves like the gamma rays or the x rays or the particles like beta particles alpha particles or the neutrons so these are the ionizing radiations so two types of ionizing radiations that induces the mutations are the x rays and the gamma rays that causes strand break or the destruction or the breakage in between the base and the sugar joining joint second type is the non ionizing radiation so what are the non ionizing radiations uh, non ionizing radiation means uh, uh, like for example uh, the uv light which causes the pyrimidin dimers in between two pyrimidines the bonds will be formed generally the bonds will be formed in between the bases of two different strands but in this case the uv light causes the bond formation between two pyrimidines which are present in a same strand not in different strand okay that i will describe in detail later on so first of all i have the chemical mutagens what are chemical mutagens two types uh, uh, not two actually uh, more than two types of chemical mutagens are there three types are there one is the base analogs one is the base analog just let me check uh, second one is the nitrous acid another one i have uh, that is intercalating agents so first one is the base analogs base analogs which are chemical mutagens base analogs two types of base analogs are there what are the two types of base analogs uh, remember as the name suggest base analogs that is they are structurally similar to some bases base analogs means they are structurally similar to the some bases which are the bases either purines or the pyrimidines the bases which are forming the dna double strand so they are base analogs that means they can substitute the base two types of base analogs are there one is the 5 bromo uracil another one is the 2 amino purine so base analogs are this is the definition base analogs are structurally sufficiently similar to the normal bases they are looking similar in structurally to the normal bases so that they can be incorporated into the dna during replication by mistake since they are structurally similar to the normal bases these base analogs may be or there is a possibility that these types of base analogs can be incorporated into the dna during the replication by mistake since they are having the similar structure to the normal bases but they are sufficiently different such that 
they increases the frequency of miss pairing say for example look at the picture the 5 bromo uracil which is a base analog for the thymine look at the structure for the 5 bromo uracil are the thymine thymine having a methyl group 5 bromo uracil having a bromine bromine group br group uh, uh, rest of the structure is almost similar same so the 5 bromo uracil is considered as a base analog or this is considered as a substitute for the thymine similarly two amino purine the bottom one two amino purine is almost having the almost same structure like the adenine so 5 bromo uracil is considered as the base analog or the substitute same thing base analog or the substitute for thymine and two amino purine is considered as the base analog or substitute for adenine so what is the uh, what may be the next result next result is that during the replication the polymerases may be there is a chance that the polymerases by mistake in case of thymine they can add fibromuracil or in case of adenine the dna polymerases by mistake they can add two amino purine because of their structural similarity with the normal bases this is the role of base analog that increases the frequency of miss pairing or the induced mutations so 5 bromouracil induces at to gc transition or the gc to at both so uh, okay so this is the structure where the 5 bromouracil can base pair with the adenine also the 5 bromouracil in its enol form what is the keto form what is the enol form just look at the two structural differences so the 5 bromouracil in its keto form it can uh, bond or base pair with the adenine and in its enol form it can base pair with the guanine also so that is the 5 bromouracil bromouracil which is a uh, substitute for the thymine and it can bond by using the double bond or the triple bond with the adenine as well as with the guanine also Achha. this is the actually the 5 bromouracil mutagenesis how the 5 bromouracil induces the mutagenesis look at the initial stage the dna double helix is having the at that is the dna double strand having at base pair now when five in the next uh, replication if the 5 bromouracil is there in the medium because of its structural similarity with the t because of the structural similarity with the thiamine the mistakenly by chance by mistake the dna polymerase can add this 5 bromouracil in place of t because the 5 bromouracil is a base analog it has a structural similarity with the thiamine so the 5 bromouracil may be incorporated in case of i mean uh, during the replication of the dna so next it will forming the a5 bromouracil structure during subsequent replication look at the next one during subsequent replication this 5 bromouracil can be base pair with the g because uh, since we have just now we have seen that this 5 bromouracil in its keto form can base pair with the adenine plus it can also base pair with the guanine so the dna strand which is normally actually having the at base pair in subsequent replication the 5 bromouracil can replaces the t now the base pair is in between a 5 b u and in next replication the A is replaced by the G and now 5BU or the bromouracil is base paired with the G. And next, this 5 bromouracil, because of its structural similarity, it can be replaced by C. So, what is the first initial strand of DNA? AT. And what is the last double strand by, uh, I mean, after the alteration of the base pair is the GC. So, this is the way, this is the way how the 5 bromouracil causes the mutagenesis because of the presence of 5 bromouracil in its both enol and the keto form it can induces at 
to the GC transition. That is the this picture actually depicts the fibromyalgia mutagenesis. How fibromyalgia causes AT to GC transition. Next uh, uh, base analog we have that is the two amino purin, which is having its structural similarity with the adenine. Let us check how. Two amino purin, which is a purin analog of the guanine and the adenine, and these two amino purin induces both the base pair substitution as well as the frame shift mutation. So this is the base analogs of two amino purin. It can uh, form a bond with the thiamine. Two amino purin can bond with the thiamine as well as two amino purin can bond with the cytosine as well. So uh, let us check the mutagenesis of two amino purin. This is the mutagenesis. So what is the structural similarity of two amino purin? It is having. Look at this. The two amino purin, the bottom one. The two amino purin is a substitute for the adenine. Just remember this one. Two amino purin is the substitute for adenine. Now let us check. The original DNA strand is having AT base pair. Now the uh, because of the structural similarity, the two amino purin can be incorporated in place of adenine in replacing the DNA. Now since it is having the structural similarity with the adenine. The adenine is replaced by the two amino purine. Now, the first it was a T base pair. Now, because of two amino purine incorporation, it is having the a P T base pair. A T was the first thing. The second amino purine is forming the bond with the T. In next replication, the amino purine can bond with the C, and lastly, this amino purine is replaced by the G. So, what is the initial base pair? A T. And what is the base pair after subsequent replication? GC. So this is the way the amino purine can causes the uh, induced mutation, and it will causes the AT to the GC substitution, GC changes, GC mutation, AT to GC substitution because of its structural similarity with the other bases. That's why this amino purine is considered as the base analog. Next one. Next, we have the nitrous acid, which is also a chemical mutagen. This is not the base analog. This is they, they are not having the structural similarity with the bases. But so what? What is its role? So nitrous acid actually reacts with the bases containing the amino group. The bases which is having the amino group, the nitrous acid it reacts with those bases like adenine and the guanine, and converts them into the keto group. The bases which are having the amino group, this nitrous acid act on them and converts this amino group into the keto group. It changes the hydrogen bonding potential of the bases by oxidative deamination. So the bases having the amino group, this nitrous acid causes the oxidative deamination to occur. It converts its amino group into keto group, and the Changing the hydrogen bonding potential of those bases. So, what will be the result after the action of nitrous acid by oxidative deamination? These are the results. Look at the result. The amino group in case of cytosine, the amino group NH2 group in the fourth carbon position. Look at the top one, cytosine. The fourth position amino group is there. NH2 group is there because of the oxidative deamination by the uh, nitrous acid HNO2. This amino group in the fourth position can be changed into the keto group C double bond O. So cytosine can be changed into uracil because of oxidative deamination by the nitrous acid. In case of adenine, the sixth position amino group can be changed into keto group C double bond O at the sixth position. The structure is almost similar, but because of the change in the amino group to the keto group. The adenine is now converted into hypoxanthine, which is having almost structural similarity with the adenine. Similarly, because uh, the guanine, which is having a amino group NH2 group at the second carbon position, guanine can be changed into xanthine because the NH2 group is changed into keto.
keto group C double bond O at the second position. In case of methyl cytosine, the amino group is changed into thiamine. So adenine and guanine can be changed into hypoxanthine and xanthine, and the cytosine and the methyl cytosine can be changed into uracil and the thiamine respectively because of the action of this nitrous acid which causes the oxidative deamination addition of oxygen and the removal of the amino group now what is the mutagenesis of this nitrous acid look at the mutagenesis this since the this nitrous acid can changes uh, this uh, cytosine into the uracil and this uracil can forming bond with the adenine so, i mean generally the cytosine cannot bond with the adenine adenine will always forming the bond with the thiamine but because of the action of this uh, nitrous oxide nitrous acid hno2 the cytosine is changed into uracil and now this uracil is able to forming bond with the adenine in the second case the bottom uh, in case of the bottom example the adenine is uh, generally not uh, forming a bond with the cytosine adenine will always forming a bond with the thiamine but because of the action of this uh, nitrous acid which causes the oxidative deamination the adenine can be changed into hypoxanthine because of changing of its amino group to the keto group this hypoxanthine can now able to forming a bond with the cytosine so that is the type of mutagenesis where the normally where the adenine cannot can never bond forming a bond with the thiamine uh, i mean generally forming a bond with the thiamine but will never never ever forming a bond with the cytosine but because of the presence of nitrous acid which causes the oxidative deamination this adenine now can forming a bond with the uracil because nitrous acid causes the change of the cytosine into uracil or changes the adenine into hypoxanthine by simply oxidative deamination of its amino group to the keto group that is the mutagenesis by nitrous acid so this is the mutagenesis is shown by the figure or this this figure also depicts the mutagenesis of the nitrous acid this is almost similar to the uh, uh, mutagenesis which is causes by the two amino purine or the fibromyuracil because of the change in the structure the at the initial uh, base pair in the initial normal dna original dna the at or the gc can be changed into at to gc or gc to at because of the oxidative deamination of the different bases which changes its structure from the amino group to the keto group by the mutagenesis of nitrous oxide which causes oxidative deamination uh i think this is the last one that is the third one that is the third one of the uh, chemical mutagens that is the intercalating agents or the acridine dyes not only the acridine dyes number of intercalating agents are there one is the very uh, common to all that is the ethidium bromide others are like proflavin or the acridine orange icr 170 icr 191 these are the some of the dyes which are generally used for the visualization or for the coloring of the dna so these are actually the intercalating agents so the acridine dyes that intercalates the dna that enter in between the dna base pairs and causes the frame shift mutation this is the view the acridine orange or the proflavin they can intercalate in between the dna base pair they causes the mutagenesis look at the uh, this figure where the acridine is acridine orange is intercalated in between the dna base pair so the acridine dye intercalated between the strands of dna that causes either the deletion or the addition or the duplication of the base pair now the physical mutagens so physical mutagens ionizing radiation or the non ionizing radiation ionizing radiations were the type of atoms that uh, that uh, travels in the form of electromagnetic waves either gamma or the x rays or the particles like beta particle neutrons or the alpha particles so ionizing radiations induces the x rays and the gamma rays 
two types of ionizing radiations are there which causes the physical which uh, comes under the physical mutagens these are x rays and the gamma rays these ionizing radiations has short wavelength and the high energy they can penetrate deeply into the biological molecules ionizing radiations create chemically reactive molecules termed free radicals and they can also causes these are the mutagenesis of ionizing radiations they can causes deletions single nicks in dna strands nicks means cut single cut in the dna strand they can causes cross linking they can even causes chromosomal breaks not only the dna breaks these radiations can causes break in the chromosome itself the whole chromosome itself what about the uh, non ionizing radiations not ionizing radiations which causes the mutation there is one which is the uv light this uv light does not penetrate this so that that is the difference between the both the ionizing and the non ionizing this non ionizing radiations does not penetrate plastic glass or the proteinaceous matter they are not used for sterilization procedures but is used to reduce microbial populations they are the lethal mutations one, only one type of mutation they cause that is the thiamine dimers they will form that i'll show you next figure this is the ionizing radiation which causes break in the dna that is the nick and i see a nick or the break either break in the both the strand of dna or break in the single strand of the dna or in more lethal form they causes the break in the chromosome itself not in the single dna they can even causes break in the chromosome itself so that is the mutation of the ionizing radiation which includes include x rays and the gamma rays which causes single stranded or double stranded breaks or in the lethal most lethal form they can also causes the break in the chromosome itself so that is the mutagenesis of the ionizing radiations next we have the non ionizing radiation that is the uv rays the uv rays does not causes any break but it uh, makes the it, it 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 causes the formation of thymine thymine dimer look at the figure look at the figure generally the base is forming in between two base pair of the two opposite strands that is the thing i mean that is the universal truth always the base is forming the uh, sorry the bond is forming in between two bases of two different strand the bonding either purine purine or purine pyrimidine double bond or triple bond that type of bonding is always formed in between the base pair of two different strands but because of the non ionizing radiation like the uv light this causes the formation of double bond in between two thymines of a same strand not in the different strand two thymines which are present in the same strand and a double bond will form in between the two thymine that makes the thymine dimer thymine dimer forming the two bonds joining two uh, thymines because of uv light so that is the type of mutagenesis which is induced by the non ionizing radiation like the uv light what is the result it causes the formation of thymine dimer in the same Be, uh, uh, strand of a dna yeah that is the same thing thymine dimer is formed so because of the thymine dimer is formed so uh, because of the incoming uv light uh, it uh, the dna when the dna polymer is reads that dna it uh, encounters there is some mispairing or there is some mutations may occur and it can be repaired by some mechanism that is also because if the this thymine dimers will form the dna is having the the eukaryotic dna is uh, having the specific mechanism where the this type of mispairing this type of bond formation can be rectified so that that will be the next topic of our class so i think that's all for today's class if you have any question you can ask okay